Go with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark 12 and verse 41. I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. Mark 12, 41 says, And he sat down opposite the treasury and saw how the crowd was casting money into the treasury. Many rich people were, so, were throwing in large sums. And a widow who was poverty-stricken came and put in two copper mites, the smallest of coins, which together make half a cent. In fact, it, they were about um, uh, one-fifth of a cent. So it was not even, not even quite half a cent that, it was, that they were worth. Which together make half a cent. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly and surely I tell you, this widow, she who is poverty-stricken, has put in more than all those contributing to the treasury. For they all threw in out of their abundance. But she, out of her deep poverty, has put in everything that she had, even all that she had on which to live. You know, there's a lot of people that have not read the entire Bible. They have not read Scripture in context. And they have told the story that Jesus wants us to be poor and only poor, and that's it. But that's not what I read in, the, in my Bible. I mean, starting in the Old Testament with Abraham, I mean, even before Abraham, Noah, God said he would bless him. But it, let, let's even look at Abraham, because according to the Bible, we are the spiritual seed of Abraham. And God said to Abraham, your seed is going to be blessed. And he said, I'm going to bless you. And Abraham was so blessed. He had so many, so many resources of people and cattle that he, and I mean, he fought a war and won it against a number of kings with his own people, with his own servants. So God increased him. It started out just, you know, him and his wife and a, and a little bit, and it just increased and increased and increased. You look at Isaac, you look at Jacob, you look at the nation of Israel, how God promised to bless them and how God has promised to bless us. So it's not about being rich or poor, but it's about your heart toward God that counts. So Jesus is standing over there looking at the treasury, and he's watching all these people put money in. Now, Jesus knew because he knew, men, he knew people's hearts. He knew what was in their heart. He knew what their thoughts were. And how much more does he not know now? See, people look on the outside, but God looks on the heart. And Jesus knew that those people that were coming in giving the large sums of money, he knew what percentage that was of what they had. And then when he saw this widow come in and give her two mites, he knew, he knew by the Holy Ghost, he knew that that woman was giving all that she had. So it's not just about the two mites, but it's about the fact that it was everything that she had. Normally, if people are poor, what they do is hang on to everything that they have and then, you know, go looking to the government or some charitable organization or something else to take care of them. But this woman put her trust in God. She didn't, there wasn't a social security system. There wasn't any welfare. There wasn't anything. Under the law in those days, women did not have inheritance rights. Women did not have the right to go out and just get a job and be the head of the house and, and, and earn, you know, make a living. There was, you know, there might have been, you know, single moms there, but it, it wasn't a case that, that single moms could go out there and, and, and inherit anything or get a job or do anything. In that society, they were totally dependent upon men and their men, their male relatives to take care of them. So if there was no, there's many instances of these widows in the Bible that have, that have no husband or some of them had even, you know, had children to take care of. Some of them didn't even have children to take care of them. And the Lord, when they looked to the Lord and trusted Him for their income, for what they needed, God blessed them and took care of them. In fact, they were, I tell you what, <laughs> they were the ones who had the most faith. Because there's so many instances in the Bible that talks about how the Lord blessed the widows. The widow with, with you know, that had the little, bit, the little jar of oil and, and the little, little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. And the Lord just kept on multiplying it and multiplying it and multiplying it all the way through the famine. And then the woman who had, you know, was in debt, her husband had died and left her in debt and with her sons, and all she had was a jar of oil. And the prophet told her, bring in those, those pots of oil. It's just, you know, get pots from your neighbors. Get as many as you can get. And she just kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. And when she asked for the next jar, they said, there's no more jars left. Listen, it didn't matter how many jars. If they'd gone to the entire country and got everybody's jars, that, that thing would have kept pouring. Amen. 
but it poured according to their faith, and their faith was the amount of jars that were in that room. Amen. Their faith was the amount of jars they put in the room and made ready, and it was stopped when their faith stopped, or, or really, it was stopped when they ran out of neighbors, <laughs> and neighbors' jars, whatever the case may be. But that, that source and supply was not going to end until they ended it, basically. But God takes care of the widow. This woman, even though she had so little, she chose to honor God. She chose to obey God. She chose to bring it and to offer it to the Lord. It's not so much about the amount, like I said, but it's about the heart that's willing to sow and to give and to honor the Lord. And because in so doing, you are trusting the Lord. You are saying, Lord, I trust you as my source and supply. I'm not trusting family. I'm not trusting government. I'm not trusting anybody else. I am trusting you, Lord. I am putting you first. I am going to honor you. And you know, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter what you have or you don't have. It doesn't matter what family you have or don't have or inheritance or not or the situation in the country, whether it's a famine or whether everything's going well. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your heart toward the Lord and your heart to honor God. And this woman sought to honor God, and so she brought everything that she had. Now, in Deuteronomy 16 and verse 16, it says, Three times a year shall all your males appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. So he said, you know, first of all, he says here, every man shall give. So every person was obligated to bring something. The Lord would not accept an excuse from anybody. Hey, if the widow can give her might, then you know what, everybody else has something to give. So the Lord wasn't going to take an excuse. He said, everybody come and come with something in your hand. Don't come with an empty hand. In other words, you have to prepare. You have to plan. You have to do it deliberately. Then he says, give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Give according to the blessing. So God already presupposes in saying that, that he's going to bless you or that whatever you have is His blessing on you. You know, the people that have the, the best time of it and the most joy in their life are people who decide to be joyful, decide to look for the good, decide to be grateful. You know, gratefulness makes you happy because when you look at what you have, you can look at it as, as if it's too little or you can look at it as perfectly enough. I mean, you're here, you're alive, you're breathing, I mean, really, as human beings, what we need to live, we need air, we need water, we need food, we need some clothes to put on. That's all we really need. You can survive everything else. <laughs> Amen. That's all that we really need. Anything more than that is a blessing. And so we need to look at everything that we have and everything that God's given us as a blessing. But we also need to, first of all, see that it does come from God. So whether it's two mites or whether it's a bag full of treasure, we need to acknowledge that it comes from God. So the Lord says, He says, give as you, as, as you are able according to the blessing. So God doesn't ask you to give what you don't have, but He does ask you to give what you do have. So I'm going to tell you a story some of you have heard before, but there was two young men that grew up together, and they grew up, and the one man inherited his father's farm and took over the farm, and the other felt the call of God to go to the world. So he went out as a missionary, and he went out for many years before he came back to his hometown. And he came back, came back to church, and he was sharing with them all the great things the Lord had done, and everybody was real excited for him, you know, his hometown, hometown boy, and the Lord's used him around the world. And uh, so his friend came up to him, and he said, hey, listen, we need to go to, to, you know, have a meal together and go, you know, 
just talk about what's going on and talk, talk about what's happened since we've seen each other and, and uh, you know, talk about old times and all this kind of stuff. So I said, sure. So they met, they got together for a meal and they were sitting there chatting about it and he was sharing a bit more with his friend about all the things the Lord was doing. And this guy was, the, the, the farmer was saying, wow, that is so awesome. He says, you know what? You're doing such a great work. I just really, you know, I think it's awesome. I really believe in what you're doing and, you know, it's so phenomenal. Listen, if I had two farms, I would give you one of them. And the missionary said, thank you, that's, that's wonderful, that's really nice of you. And uh, they talked a little more, and the guy was just so sturdy, and he said, you know what? He said, if I had two tractors, I would give you one of them. And uh, he said, wow, that's great. And they, they kept on talking, and, um, and he said, you know, if, if I had two houses, I would give you one of them. And then uh, the missionary looked at him, and he said, he said to the farmer, he said, um, and what if you had two pigs? And the guy looked at him and he said, now, you know, that's not fair. You know, I have two pigs. <laughs> it's very easy to give what you don't have. Amen. But it's a lot harder when it's yours and you have it and you don't want to let go of it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 says, Do not gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and worm consume and destroy and where thieves break through and steal. But gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor, wor nor worm consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever your treasure is, your heart is. Wherever your heart is, your treasure is. Whatever means more to you, that's where your money is going to go. So if you believe in the kingdom of God, if you believe that God is your source and supply, if you believe that everything that you have, you are just a steward of it, that God has put it in your hands for you to be used by Him. See, there's many ways that God can use you. And one of them is through the things that he's put in your hands. So you can serve God by giving yourself and by doing things and being present and participating. Or you can give and participate in God's kingdom by giving things, by giving clothes or shoes or things that you have, things you're not using, or money. There's many different ways that you can sow and that you can give. If you believe in the kingdom of God, if you believe that God has anointed you and He desires to use you to be a blessing. And my Bible tells me that God wants to make us a blessing from the front to the back. God wants to make us a blessing. From the front to the back, God wants to use every one of us. And there's a lot of people that go, Lord, I want you to use me. Please use me. Come on, Lord, use me. But you know what? They don't want to get up and give. They don't want to give anything. They want God to use them, but they don't want to give anything. God has put things in your hand so that you can participate in His kingdom. You can be a part of, it, of the process. You can get blessed in the middle of it. Hallelujah. He gives us this awesome opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God, to sow into souls being saved, to sow into people's lives being changed. And you know, there, there's a lot of places that your money could go and you could store it all up you could put it you could go gambling with it you can you can waste it in all kinds of different ways but that money is just going to it going to be moving around this earth and and doing maybe good maybe bad but it's not going to have an eternal effect listen this earth is this life that we live here is very very short and Jesus isn't saying do not have a storehouse because he says in Deuteronomy and all over the Bible, he says, I will bless your storehouse. So if God says he's going to bless our storehouse, how can he tell us not to have a storehouse? So he doesn't say hey, there's nothing wrong with having a bank account. There's nothing, nothing wrong with having a savings account. There's nothing wrong with having those things. But he says this. He said those things, all of the material things will perish. They could get stolen. They could, you know, they could rust. The moss could take them, you know. Uh, they, there's all kinds of ways that they can get destroyed and that's the end of them. But when we sow into the kingdom of God, we're putting treasure into a storehouse that's never going to perish, 
that's never going to fail, that's never going to fade away, and it waits for us when we get there. You see, you, hey man, you can't, even if you had to, even if you, if you gave nothing every day, if you gave nothing at all and you just left everything in your will and left it all to charity, that doesn't count. You got to sow it while you're still alive. You got to sow into God's kingdom while you're still alive. Amen. And when you get to heaven, you can't get up there and go, oh, I don't have much treasure. Let me send a message down there. Let me send them a telegraph. Tell my wife, put some money in the bank. I mean, and I mean, get the money out the bank and go put it in the church. That, it doesn't work that way. We have this life to do what we can for the Lord, to sow, to give, and to be a blessing. And he promised that if we bless him and we honor him and we seek him first, that he's going to take care of us. And he says, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to run down here. He talks in this whole uh, chapter about being, don't be worried about what you're going to eat or drink because you can't do anything by worrying. And he says, God will take care of you. And he says in verse 32, well, verse 31, he says, don't worry, don't be anxious, saying, what are we going to have to eat? What are we going to have to drink? What are we going to have to wear? For the Gentiles, the heathen, wish for and crave for and diligently seek these things. And your heavenly Father knows well that you need them all. In other words, people who don't know Jesus spend all of their time just earning money for, to take care of themselves. Just that their whole focus is just, they, you know, eat, drink, what they're going to wear, that's their whole focus. But he says, if you will put my kingdom first, he says, he says, your father knows you need them. Do you know that your father knows that you need some things? Do you know that the father knows your needs? Do you know that he knows your needs? Do you know that he knows already what you need? He already knows what's going to happen this week and what you need for this week. He already knows he already knows. So he says, look, I know. So he says, look, this is what I want you to do. I know what you need. So this is what I want you to do. He says, but seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. Do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. So you know what it means when he says all these things will be given to you besides. That means all these things will be given to you and more. All these things will be given to you and more. All these things will be given to you and more. So we need to sow in faith. Our sowing tells God how much we trust him, how much we love him, how much we honor him. It's a, something concrete that you can do. See, because you can be like the guy that was giving his house and his farm and his, you know, tractor all day long. But when it came to his pigs, no way, Jose. When it came to something he could actually do, forget about it. So let's not, you know, give all the pie in the sky. Let's give what we have in our hand right now. Let's give according to what God has, you, everybody has been blessed by God according to a different measure. How much has he blessed you? Out of that measure, so back into him, because he promises that he's going to increase you and increase you and increase you, so that God's plan for you is that your measure is going to increase as the blessing increases, and then your measure will increase, and then the blessing increases, and then the measure increases, and then the blessing increases. I want to tell you, this stuff works. It works in Africa and it works in America, and it works in Australia, and it works in South America, and it works in Asia. It works anywhere that people trust and believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we've been married now in October, will be 32 years. We stepped out in the ministry with no, not one cent to our name. Pastor Rodney had a guitar and I had a car. And we purposed in our heart that we, that we were going to trust God, that we were going to take Him at His word, and we were going to prove Him. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> Thank you, honey. <laughs> I, knew that, I knew that we wouldn't just have the guitar and the car forever, honey. <laughs> You know what, sometimes all the stuff we have is, is really just clutter. You really just don't need all the stuff that you have. And, um, but there are things that God knows that you need. There are essential things that God knows that you need. And if you will honor Him, He will always take care of you. You will not starve. 
You will not ever not have some clothes to wear. You know what? The Lord will take care of you, whatever you need. And you know, um, life throws a lot of things at us. Sometimes, you know, we go through hard times. Sometimes we're flying high. But wherever you find yourself, you need to make up your mind that God is first place and that you honor Him. And that you don't just look to Him when, you, when you're in, this, in, a, in a place of need. And then when you're flying high, you know you don't need Him anymore. No, we need to honor the Lord. Whatever we have in our hand, whatever our situation is, whether we're wealthy and well-fed and we don't lack anything, or whether we're like that widow on, on our last legs, we need to honor the Lord with what He's put in our hand. And He will take care of us. He will He will keep us if we will humble ourselves before him and he he will he will meet every need that we have we will not lack we will not be put to shame because he is our father and he gets the glory when we are blessed amen